See, you see the screen? We good? You might have to press the on Twitch. It's like a little, it's kind of weird. You kind of click the side and then the chat comes out and then you can see the video. Yep, there it is. Okay. And there's all your good stuff. Hopefully it's good stuff. Yeah, I liked it. I mean, I, kind of, I skimmed through it. I want to... So here's what I want to do. I want to I want to approach this like it's a novel. I know it's a short story. But with a novel, especially because you wrote this kind of like an origin story. Like, I think, <clears throat> I think there's a... a a better a just like it's a better approach for me so like if in the end you want it to be a short story you're like that guy's an idiot he was trying to make it a novel that's fine but i i, I just want to go through some stuff that's like that i think is uh will be helpful just to make your stuff gooder better <laughs> Okay, um, I also want to ask a couple questions to like, um, uh, what's the, what's like the genre you're going for? What kind of story are you trying to tell? Um, I want the story to kind of like be like educated dystopia. Okay. The world was, was moving in that direction. And it, are you going more for like a, like an adventure type story or like a romance? Um, there's definitely a little romance in it, but definitely more of uh, an adventure, uh, more of an adventure and about trying to find hope in a dark place. Okay. Plus a little, plus a little near future sci-fi in there. Yeah. I, I, I like those parts of it. I, I like what you're doing. I just, I think there's, I'll talk about it as I go through. So, okay. I really like this opening line. Today is the day, or whoops, now I, I really messed that up. There we go. So, <laughs> I, and I just kind of want to like, today is the day I'm going to die in the next few minutes actually, standing here. So I like that opening. There's just little things that I think make things tighter and better. So it's like, so I think, like, going to die is a little, it, it's it's ambiguous, not ambiguous, but it's not as, today is the day I die. A little, a little more active with Yeah, a little more, a little more, like, right to it. And then, and this is just kind of how I'd format it. You don't have to, so today is the day I die. In the next few minutes, actually. And with, oh, that was another question I want to ask you. Did you start writing this in, in third person? Or was yeah. it all, okay, because. Well, no, well, no, no, I started in first person. Okay. Uh, just so you can get in the character's head a little better. Yeah, there, there's. And I didn't do it, did I? I did, I just switched away to yeah, there's a couple places like I you're you're really solid at just writing just straightforward and and it's very clear what you're doing. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. so it's it's little it's little tricks and stuff. So I'll show you a couple here. Like we're we're in we're in the main character set. So today is the day I die, and the next few. Uh, Sorry, I'm kind of a little all over the place. I want to talk about this too. There were okay. Just remember this for later. Um, present tense and, and past tense. Uh, I'll get to that in a second because of the way this is formatted. But I have I have another kind of big suggestion. Okay. Um. So. Standing here on the George Washington Bridge, the wind a constant low hum in my ear as it whips through the metal framework. So there's there's a missing verb here. But uh, I'm trying to look at what it what okay. 
I kind of like bringing out some more of the guy's voice, so it's like... So it's like, I guess... I guess the George... <laughs> uh, so, right, like... Today is the day I'm going to die in the next few minutes, actually. I guess the George Washington Bridge is as good a place as any. So you get a little more, just a little more in his head. And then, uh, a constant, constant hum. So you don't need, you don't need in my ear because we're kind of in his head. We'll just get rid of this hum. A constant hum, whipped through the metal framework. So, in, you could say like the wind was a constant hum whipping through the metal framework. A constant hum whipped through the metal framework. I think that implies the wind, but you could also say a constant hum of wind whipped through the metal framework. I don't think you need of wind, but, you know, it's just figuring out kind of what what you like. Um, it's cool out here, kind of peaceful, actually. I want to talk, like, I chuckled softly at this ironic thought, given my circumstances. Mm -hmm. I kind of think if you're in his head, you want, you, you more want him to be, if you want a, him chuckling softly instead of him chuckling softly, make it, have him making, like, sort of dumb jokes to himself. You know, like, the brute. The bridge swayed, showing its age, yet still stood the test of time. <clears throat> Sounds like someone I know. And I kind of like the idea of, you don't really know this guy's age yet, and he's a little older. So yeah. I, I kind of like getting that into the text. So, you know, you have this kind of bridge that's swaying in the wind, showing its age. And you, you get a bit of him into it. The occasional... I, oh, I thought... I, I thought this description was really good. The... Uh, but I wanted to sh the the occasional self-driving car passed swiftly behind me. A Addy. Adding a swift rise in pitch to the evening's sound. I, like, I really liked this description. I just thought it was a little, little clunkier. The occasional self-driving car passed behind me, adding a swift rise in pitch to the evening soundtrack. So kind of same thing, but it's a little more direct. Yeah. They're driving towards something, doing something with their lives, life so their purpose of meaning, sharing it with people who cared about them. They felt fulfilled, their dreams realized. I thought bitterly. Okay. The I thought bitterly, you don't need because we're in their head. Not like me. I kind of want I kind of want him to be a little more like hey, here's like an alt version. Alt version. Like yours works fine. I just uh So adding pitch to the soundtrack. So you're coming off the soundtrack sentence. 
I mean, pitch the soundtrack. I thought they thought they'd be unoccupied at this hour, but no, a small group of friends, drunk probably, and heading somewhere towards something for some, something. Doing yeah. something with their... I, I like that repetition, by the way. I, I think it's kind of funny. With their lives, lives filled with purpose and meaning. Sharing it with people who care for them. Dreams realized. Probably. Hopefully. Or not. <laughs> right? Like... <laughs> What the hell did I know? Right? Like, you get it. So instead of the I thought bitterly, instead of having I thought bitterly, you have dreams realized prob probably or not. What the hell did I know? You're expressing I thought bitterly, but in a way that's not I thought bitterly. You know what I mean? Showing, not telling. Right. Um... Where is the, or, oh, okay. This was just little stuff, little ticky deck stuff here. Uh, leaning on the bridge railing. Okay, I, I really, this whole paragraph, I really liked the description. I just think it's, it's, it's what I call like first draft description. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So it's like, leaning on the bridge railing, I contemplate the panorama surrounding me. Like, this is sort of, you don't need this, because if you just describe the panorama around him, he's contemplating it. So you can, and leaning on the, you can have leaning on the bridge railing, but it's not really doing anything. So, like, you can cut this whole sentence and say, and I really like the, the imagery here. You could say like far below, uh, you have the water is in constant motion far below obsidian reflecting the black, night, the black of the night sky. And it's a fine sentence, it works fine. But I'll just, far below obsidian waters churned, reflecting the night sky, right? That's saying the same thing, same imagery. Far below, obsidian water is yeah. reflecting the night sky. So it, it's the same thing, but it's a little more like vivid. And there's, yeah. it's all your words. It's just ordered differently. <laughs> so like on my right, on my right, and this is just, this is a, on my right, the light, this is fine, but personally, I'd cut this, the on my right. Yeah. Because I dry, I just, I want to stay in his head. So I'd just be like, the lights of New York glitter, whoa. The lights of New York City glitter like jewels in the darkness, bringing... The lights of New York City glitter like jewels in the darkness, bringing some light to what nature would otherwise smother with her inky gloom. It's good imagery. It's a little on the clunky side. Like you have to kind of chew through this a bit. So I think you could go... I think you could go... The lights of New York... And I'm putting it all in past tense, but the, I know the start is in present and I'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. The lights of New York City glittered like jewels in the darkness bringing some is ambiguous <laughs> like you don't need some bringing light <laughs> to what oh and I'll, okay so bringing here I'll just illuminating 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 nature's otherwise Inky gloom, right? Your words, 
just now it's you're saying the exact same thing. The lights of New York City glittered like jewels in the darkness, illuminating nature's otherwise inky glow. Same thing, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, he's still in his head, uh, far below obscene wires turned reflecting the night sky, the lights of New York City glittered like jewels in the darkness, illuminating nature's otherwise inky gloom. A city, and you can do, I like fragments, a city filled with people going on with their lives. You can all, it was a city, like if you're, if you're not comfortable with that fragment, it was... <coughs> I'm fine with a city filled with people going on with their lives, but just it was a city filling up, filled with people going on with their lives. Self-absorbed people with their own problems, not taking the time to think of others, thoughtless to people suffering, not offering to help, leaving them to figure things out on their own, no matter how bad it got and got played. But there's a little, there's something missing right here. No matter how bad it got and it got played, but it feels like you you're want. This is almost like a punchline, but you're missing the setup for it. The, and it got plenty bad. Um, I also think that Thoughtless, what did I? Uh, thoughtless other not offering. Oh, here's the other. Thoughtless to people suffering, not offering help. Leaving them to figure things out on their own, no, ma no matter how. No, 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 no. Maybe, maybe thought less of the people severing and leaving them to figure things out on their own, no matter how bad. So you can lose this. They never offer help. And then you, I get the and it got bloody bad, but you need. If you want to keep that, you need to really set it up <clears throat> as like a like a punchline for something. And I'll show you how to do that with something later that I read later that I think is a better example. Um, and okay, so I just want this whole first thing is very first person. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just fixing stuff. That was... Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so. Everything up until here is very first person, very in this guy's head. He's on a bridge. He's about to jump. Dark waters below. He's looking out at New York City. And then what What would otherwise be a serene picture is now warped by his anger and, again, his. So you've jumped out of first person here. <clears throat> by his anger, acutely feeling the agony of everything he has lost. There's a couple things with this is that, one, like, First person, you're in his head, and you can get away with a lot more doing this stuff. I should, you know, the dreams realize probably or not. What the hell did I know? You can do more of that instead of having to do this summary stuff. So if you want to do this type of stuff, it should be more in that form. The, the other note I have on this is, like, acutely feeling the agony of everything he lost. You're kind of telling the reader how he feels, and you don't. You, you want him punching, you know, car like running out into traffic, standing in front of cars, trying to get hit by cars, rather than saying that he acutely felt the agony of everything he lost. Like you, you, you get what I'm saying. Like if you have some sort of action that's like just self-destructive. Yeah. It'll say the same thing, and you're, but the reader will be like, oh, why is he doing that? What, what's he trying to do? What's he trying to accomplish? Um, so I, I think this whole thing you can just cut. Whoops. So, okay, and this is what I want to talk about, because this is where I can go two ways. The past. So you have, you have from like, here to now, so you have all of this stuff, <laughs> like, you see how long it, right? 
all of that stuff is backstory, right? Yeah. It, it's yeah. it's you're giving him motivation for why he wants to jump, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, with, with those sentences, I'm also trying to establish uh, some emotional stakes. It's more, you know, I, I could I, I recognize I could jump all day to okay, this is what happens to my wife, but. Is she, is she just a cipher without this kind of background? So I hear what you're saying. And what I want to, why I separated this from the other stuff and I'm not just like delete is because I think you should save all this stuff and everything that's in here mm -hmm. and work it into the story as the story progresses. And this is why I said I want to treat it like it's a novel and not a short story because I really want to to make like a first chapter with a strong hook for you and the problem with all this stuff where it's like the very like i fell in love with a girl and she was beautiful and great and times were great and sometimes they were and then you know there was an accident and things happened and like all of that stuff is it's it's why i asked like what genre you were going for because if you wanted to do like a was it Bridge Over the Ridge or River Kwan? Where like he's yeah. remembering his life and all these times. It's a different type of story than what your what I think your story is. Cause like with the the reveal that we're gonna talk about in a little bit with the like at, when he jumps. You know what I'm talking about, right? Because I think yeah. your the story you want to tell is really the story after he jumps and all the stuff that goes on with that. So I think you need to get there faster rather than have 12 pages of, hey, this is all the reason why he wanted to jump and why he's like suicidal and blah, 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 blah. So and I, it, I don't think it's bad. I just think it's like it doesn't belong here. You're going to lose readers before they ever get into what's cool and fun about your story. I do like uh, – and okay, so – I would all that stuff I would I would delete and butt up to now, but I do want to talk about some stuff in here. Okay. Cause there's some there's some really good description, but you're a little uh it, it's like the stuff before where it was like just be more uh be more direct. So like uh I know this is so she looked like a model, sunglasses propped on her top of her head. Like, this is a bit of a cliche, like, and, but not even, I don't even want to say cliche, because even if it wasn't a cliche, she looked like a model. You don't need it, right? Because you said, I, I noticed a girl... And a couple of people, have, I noticed a girl, a couple rows. Oh, no, I get it. She's, I noticed a girl, a couple of people ahead of me. They're in line. Okay. For my history class. She looked like a model, but like you can, you can just describe her, like literally describe her. That's true. She had sunglasses propped on top of her head. And then, like, go straight to metaphor, a natural extension of her brown, of her dark brown, silky hair. Or, I, I don't know, looking like, looking like my work, but she had sunglasses propped on her head, and maybe, like, an action, like, maybe she nudges them back, like, it's a natural extension of her, like, the sunglasses were a natural extension of, of her body. The, the also the I'm really like the these descriptions the brown silky the dark brown silky hair I just think there's too many adjectives there like <laughs> right like she had sunglasses propped on top of her head uh, she she used them in a manner like this is the bad version Bad version. She's uh, 
as if they were a natural extension of her body. And I don't know. This isn't this isn't very good. I'll, I'll just say that. But like the idea of like describe her in some way that because again we're still in first person. Yeah. And you and instead of describing her, she's like a model. Be descriptive to stuff that's. I think the guy's name's Tom, right? Be descriptive for why Tom is yeah. noticing her and what appeals to Tom about her. So, like, things that are specific like that. Like, the I liked the Superman t-shirt thing cause, that you do later. Her, her makeup accentuated her high cheekbones. I enter already existing beauty. I don't think you need this. Because it, it just feels redundant. Her, like her long lanky legs, her lanky legs are wrapped in tight. And then I also think it's weird that you're talking about her legs. And I the sentence I almost want to be like, it, I want it to be more like the the focus of the sentence, or not the focus, the object of the sentence. I almost want to be the tight navy blue jeans. Cause mm -hmm. th and there's also an her lanky legs were wrapped in tight navy blue jeans, standing up in high heels, looking like she was too good for this place. So there's like a... These sentences don't... They're not... They're not about the same object. Right? Her lanky legs... It's like you've personified her legs. Her lanky legs were standing up in high heels, right? Like that's that's a little weird, right? Yeah. I liked her in one place in line, which is the outfit in line. Yeah, yeah. So I instead, mean, okay. it, it's just it's because this list is so like objectify, and I don't mean objectifying like in a you know like a sexist way. I just mean like it's literally. It's objectifying parts of her, where I think you really want to more describe her. So that's why I want to focus on, like, the tight navy blue jeans, uh, her... Like, I don't even think you need lanky, to be honest. Because I think you could say her legs were wrapped in... And, and wrapped is weird too. I think jammed into tight navy blue jeans. And then if you want, if you absolutely want like uh, high heels, like she stood, she stood a f a foot over everyone else in her high heels. But I I don't actually think you want that. I, I do like the looking like she was too good for this place. I'm not sure how you work this in though, but I, I just want I want to go back to the high heels. I don't think you want the high heels because the way you describe her makes her feel smaller than Tom. You know what I mean? And it, it's just weird. But anyway, so this is all the stuff that like I think. I think you need to, it doesn't help with the first chapter, but I did want to talk about kind of these descriptions like this that are sort of laundry lists of body parts and instead focus on what Tom finds interesting about her rather than like describing her apart from another character. The other thing I want to talk about about the the past and present thing is, yeah. and this is, if you were going to do it this way, which I don't like, like I said, I really think you should cut this, these 12 pages and go right to the now, right to, as I, the, it's right before he jumps. Um, 
But if you wanted to do it this way, what I'd suggest is that you make the present and the past very different from each other and it and do it in a way that that you can that the reader can actually tell and what i'd suggest is like if you wanted to do it this way write all of the present tense stuff in present tense and write the past in past tense that way there won't be confusion between the two the the other reason why I think you should cut this is that you have these, so we're in the present and then all of a sudden there's a cut to the past and we're in a CVS yeah. pharmacy in line and he's noticing this girl that he recognizes from history class. And I'm trying to, there's a couple places where like we're, we're, we're in his head on the bridge when he's about to jump and he's remembering these things, but inside the memories, he's also remembering other things. So it's like a flashback inside of a flashback. Yeah. It gets a little confusing. And I think, again, I think back to the genre thing, if you wanted to do more of a romance, I could see that working. But you really got to nail that stuff if you wanted to do more of a, like, dystopian future adventure thing. Then I think you you save all this stuff to leak out over the course of an entire novel. Does that you make sense? Be, yeah, go ahead. You think it would be better off, like, towards the end, right prior to when he's about to jump? Because in there, he, you know, he's talking about the things that he remembers. No, I think chapters later. Like I think, I think, yeah, yeah. I think, I think we're talking about like when he jumps, he meets the guy, right? And and I'll get more specific, but I I'm kind of I want to hit it as we go through it. But I think you really want to play up the intrigue. Whoa. <laughs> I think you really want to play up the intrigue of, okay, there's this guy, he's about to jump, what's going on? Give him some character and some, like, this bitterness stuff. And, like, I I kind of went through, and I think I wrote him a little more dickish than you had him, and that's a me thing. So, like, if that's an issue, like... But I actually think with the premise you have, and I like it, I think him being kind of a little bit more of a suicidal a-hole is a better character direction, especially for him to start out as. There's something interesting about that, especially when we get to the now. So I'll, I'll just jump here now. Um, so let's see. So this is more recap, those brief moments that... This is all stuff that should be leaked out, like, because the whole, the bulk of the, 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 and again, I know it's a short story, but the bulk of the, the story should be the suicidal a-hole, and then we get, us getting glimpses of the softer side of him, instead of just getting this full, like, info dump on, oh, he was softer at one point. So, like, there will be points in your story where maybe you feel like, okay, he's too much of a brutish asshole. We need to, we need to give the reader something so that they can root for him. So, so th that's what I'm saying is, like, this stuff you've already written needs to be pieced out a little bit more. And, okay. and you really need to hit your hook first, and your, your hook is down here more... Um, yeah, I, I know I was going for a, um, look at this guy, look at, look at all the crappy stuff there. Yeah, yeah. I, them up and tear them down. That, that's fine, and I think there's a lot of that already written. And in him, when you pull that out, is like, he's gone through all this crap, and you can sense that and feel that without, like, literally telling everyone his whole life story. And then 
give give the reader the little moments that are like the really poignant ones when like like at the start of the story the the reader's not ready for that if that makes yeah. sense like it's just too much and they don't care about him and they're not rooting for him so you can make him a very sympathetic empathetic guy that had this this awful event happen but they're kind of not going to care cuz they want to read your story about suiciders and this guy jumping off a bridge. Mm. So I think you need to get to that before you show the softer side. As I pulled out, uh, I, I thought this was just a weird thing. I think that needs to be just reworked. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll agree with you there. Um, because it could it could just be like. As as I regained my senses, as I pulled out my like I, I get what you're trying to do, but also if you're gonna cut all this stuff above it, as I regain my senses work, but also like now he's not even he's still in this moment now. Cause we never cut we never cut to the past. So we're still on thoughtless people. Thoughtless to people suffering, leaving them to figure out things on their own. No matter how bad got, they'd never offer help. I could smell a whiff of humidity in the air. The moistness <laughs> raising the hackles on my skin. I like hackles. The hackles on my skin. Yeah, that's not a very common word. No, but I like it. I, I tend to use like scruff of the neck but it's sort of the same thing, right? Um, I could smell a whiff of humidity. Uh, some boats moved in the distance. I'd be, I'd be more specific than some. I just, that's a little thing I like. Cru cruise liner, you know, fishing boats. Just something a little more specific than than some. Uh, their light barely noticeable in the pall of the night sky. Again, really solid description. The sound of a jet airplane, and I think you can actually get away with an airplane tore through the air high above, ripped the sky apart with, there you go. I meant that sentence to be very subtle allusion to uh, uh, the guy flying in the. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I just. I, I didn't want to spoil it, I just wanted to kind of allude to it so people read through it again, hypothetically. They'd be like, oh, look, it's been right there all along, I just didn't realize it. Yeah, and this, it, this is a really good description. I'm just, I'm getting rid of the. Kind of the clunkiness, you know what I mean? So, so you have yeah. uh, moved in the distance, their light barely noticeable in the pall of the night sky, an airplane ripped ripped through the sky, ripped the sky, no, I don't know. An airplane ripped the sky apart with its unwelcome intrusion. No, I think that's really strong. I thought of our song. It used to bring me peace, just remembering it, making me think back to my wedding day. Now it only brought sorrow. I love this and cocker all. You don't need I thought with anguish, because we're we're in his <laughs> head. Only I did like I did like this line though. Only love doesn't conquer all, only pain can do that. That's kind of that's so cynical. I love it. Um considering, considering where he's at. Yeah. Like I I wanna separate these from I'm not sure because we're cutting out the all the backstory yeah this might not work so like just might not work without backstory it might just be too much of a curveball for for the reader. 
Mm. And this is just one thing you'd have to read from the top down because so much was cut out. But love doesn't conquer all. Only pain can do that. Um, this is stuff that's, this is a me thing, but I don't, I don't like, my anger flared up. I don't like telling the audience, like, he's angry. Whoops. Like, like, again, it's the thing where, like, you'd be better off him punching the steel bars of the bridge. Showing the telling. Right. But I, I just, it's, I don't even want to say it's a showing, not telling thing. Because I want, like, yeah. I don't want to say that in a generic way. Like, I want you to know why. Because mm -hmm. when you say my anger flared up, the reader's response to that is like, okay. Like, there isn't much thought, right? But if you have him, like, again, jumping in front of a car and nearly getting hit, and then running to the other side, and he's, like, crazed and punching a pillar, like a steel I-beam support or whatever. The reader's going to be like, what's his deal? Like, what's he so upset about? Right? So they're, they're participating in it. So I, it's not just that it's a sh show, don't tell thing. It's that by doing my anger flared up, you're actually robbing the reader of being able to participate in this story. Oh, wow. That's so, that. And that, that's kind of the stuff I want to talk about in doing these kind of videos. Is that, like, the why is you do certain stuff. Because it's not, it's not wrong to tell. There are times you want to tell stuff. It's just that when you want the, when you want the reader to participate, you kind of want to dramatize stuff. So my anger flared up in the white hot throbbing of a thousand needles ripped through me sitting. And this I don't mind as much, white hot throbbing of needles ripped through me setting all my nerve endings on fire. Because that's a little more ambiguous than just saying, hey, my anger flared up. But I felt disemboweled by it. I, this works sometimes, but to me it works more in like a reactionary state rather than like a we're building the scene here so because we're like we're building the scene where he's he's gonna jump about the, but the your 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 language is very strong i like it Tear, tearing me apart inside out with the relentlessness of waves crashing against the shorter in a hurricane with each undulating wave it made my burden of carrying the suffering harder and harder this is really good it's it now I will say it's the show don't tell thing because this is narrative summation and we're in a moment where we really want dramatization, which is narrative summation is telling and, and dramatization is showing. This is good, my beat my heart beat faster, roaring in my ears. I the personification, I, I personally like doing this, personifying body parts. I might, I might even, I might even just like really emphasize it. And this might be a little too comedic, but my heart beat faster, roaring in my ear, ears, and knew that there was no, no turning back from this. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, I like that. And there wasn't, not for me, I don't know if you need this, it feels kind of redundant. There was, this was never ending with no hope in sight, just getting worse over the years, cumulating in this cru crucial moment. I think, uh, this is one where I think you can show this. I, I think this is telling too much. I just can't take it anymore. Um, I don't have the strength. If you want to do this, I think it should be dialogue, but I don't think you should do this. I, I think it should just be gone. I climbed, it's up over, right? I climbed up over, I climbed, climbed over the rail. 
and close my eyes, tears streaming from them. Uh, that's a little weird. I think this is a dangling participle. Because it's like, I climbed up over the rail, I, and closed my eyes, tears streaming from them. But the subject is I, so tears streaming from I, It's a little awkward. I, I don't know. I might... Tears streamed from them. The wind whipped my clothes into a frenzy. I'll be with you soon, Laura, I whispered. I don't think you need to whisper, because I think you actually you set the mood really well. Okay. So I, I don't think anyone's thinking he's like, well, and even if he's yelling it, like, if someone's interpretation of the scene is that he'd be yelling it into the wind, that's cool. And if it if their interpretation is they're whispering, I, I, I think they get it. I like doing this where it's just, in one smooth motion, I jumped. Right? <laughs> like, like... You're saying he jumped really quickly without any hesitation, but then the read makes it kind of long. It, 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 uh, I, I can see some bad math we're talking about. <laughs> In one smooth motion, I jump. It's like, it's very finite and like, yeah. I felt the wind pushing against me. I Here I think you can just have the wind pushed against me. Offering little resistance as I fell. My limbs spread eagled. My clothes splayed behind me, thrashing loudly in the air. I felt at peace now, knowing the end was near. The pain would... Is it... Pain would be over very soon, giving me... Cerces. I had to look this up. This this is an archaic word, and it's right. You used it correctly, but I don't know if anyone will, will know this, but I, I'm going to leave it because you were too smart for me. Um, the pain would be over very soon, giving me surcease. The surcease I definitely need. The pain would be... The pain would soon be over. Like, I, I, maybe this is me and my ear, but I think it should be this pain would soon be over. But maybe maybe you're right. Maybe it could, the pain would soon be over, giving me the surcease I, I desperately needed. See? Nah. I think that's fine. Uh, my tears flowed freely, and I... I think persona, like, uh, what do you call it? Possession's kind of always weird. Mm -hmm. Tears flowed freely up the sides of my head, the wind forcing them above me. I think this is just weird. <laughs> I mean... I, there's a part of me that wants to make that work, but I think you have to add more into it, and then I think it's just a distraction. The, the wind flicking them away from me or something. Yeah, because you already got the droplets disappeared behind me as I gained velocity. Disappeared. And you can do tears flowed freely up the sides of my head, the droplets disappearing as I gained velocity. Let's do that. Right? That's cool. Now you sound like a writer. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't felt this in a long time, this sense of calm. When was the last time I felt this good? It was so hard to remember. I, I, I don't... Because you're, you're in his head. Yeah. It was so hard to... I think you can be a little more literal. You, you can be so hard to moan. It's 
it's been a hazy fog for so long. So you're just going straight, straight to the metaphor. Hole filled with holes that my pain was only glad to smother. And I think you can lose this stuff too. It's a little eh. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was thinking about how to describe that feeling. And I love this though. I love this because it's the it goes back to. I know we've moved her now, but. I think it'll play off. It goes back to her and it goes back to your hook. So this is what it feels like to be Superman flying through the air, which is great because your hook is is just that. <laughs> uh, I like the embedding that into the story. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe one of the kids' quirks and things like that. Very, very, I, I, I like the subtlety of that, just kind of a, a, a running through it like that. Yeah, because you think it's a throwaway thing, and you think it's just, oh, he's a fan of Superman, but it's, it ha has a bigger part in play. The cold air bit into my cheeks, clearing my mind and lifting I, Again, I don't know. I, I like the clearing my mind thing's weird, but the cold air bit into my cheeks, lifting the darkness. Like a gossamer shroud carelessly tossed into the wind. Period. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Period. Uh, shedding some light and providing much needed clarity for the first time. Nah. <laughs> Cold air bin in my cheeks lifting in the darkness like a gossamer shroud carelessly tossed into the wind. I remembered. I remembered graduating from college with my bachelor's degree in accounting. Shout out to Larry Korea. Um, oh, really? Oh, yeah, he was in accounting. You didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. Oh, that's funny. Um, I want to pick something thoroughly average. <laughs> well... Come this, come this guy. Yeah, yeah. I just... Because uh, Larry's... His first book, The Monster Hunter International, that opening chapter is just some accountant throwing his boss out a 14-story window. It, oh. <laughs> it's great. That's a great book. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember... In a, This is questionable. This is like have to see how it plays without the backstory. It, it's this is going to be a like a dealer's choice. Like you choose, you figure out if this works or not. This might be a little too sappy with all the stuff removed but it also might just be it might work because hey he's dying he's he's killing himself yeah um i remembered how i never thought i'd feel such joy like that until the priest married us in front of all our friends and family and then this is kind of more of that i remember way into the closed door Oops. smell of lilac the the description is really strong the cozy smell I associated with her. I'm so happy right now. And you see why I asked, like, are you going? What are you going for? Like, you can you can totally write like a romance thing, but the, the hook of this story is not a romance hook. So you're gonna lose all your your readers by having that chunk ahead. I remember being in the doctor's office. I remember so. Oh, I don't want this to happen here. Oh, um, yeah. Later in the story. Not yet. Yeah, I'll talk about this. Um, there's a there's another part where I wanted to address this, but it's 
like you're basically giving this guy his arc already and it's why i said he should kind of be an asshole-ish dude who's like super suicidal because then the the hook you have coming up and that whole mission thing yeah his arc should happen through that instead of Again, like if it was the bridge over the river Kwan type story, I, th I hope that's the right one where the guy's like remembering his entire life. If it was that type of story, this works because that's a revelation for that type of thing. But you don't want him like you're ending his character arc right here when you want to end it like towards the end of the story. So, so really like. Sink the asshole -ish suicidal dude killing himself. And maybe, I get maybe he's regretting it, and that's fine. But don't have him, like... Don't have him make him have his epiphany, where he's like, I get it now, I understand. He, he, he can't do that until the end of the story. If you even want to do that at all. Um... I noticed, so just kind of put it, put him in the perspective. The water rushed towards me. The white caps, white caps were playing across the surface. I'm closer and you don't need this because, like, you literally just described the small details to us. Yeah. I'm going to die when I hit that water. Don't need that. Thought stung me knowing how food. This is part of that, too. I wished I'd never jumped now. Like, he, he, he's having an epiphany that he shouldn't have here. For if this if the story ends like when he hits the water, it's fine to have this epiphany here. But he, you know, he's not he's not gonna die. So like, save this type of epiphany for later. The water rushed towards me, white caps were playing across the surface. Maybe its surface works. Uh, I closed my eyes again, not ready for the inevitable impact that would almost certainly kill me. I felt something smack me, causing my whole body. Uh, and this, I like. Something smacked me, causing my whole body to shudder all at once. My mind fell into darkness for the last time engulfing me. It's like in various regret chasing. Okay, so this is good. Because I just, one that I felt like is, you don't need it. The something smacked me is the, uh, it could be the final deal, you know? Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to kind of leave the reconnection without revealing what really happened. Right. Hang on, I want to put your, I put a thing that links to your, your book reviews on my, uh, there we go. It's going. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, I woke up, I woke up to the sound. So I woke up to a loud noise filling the air around me. I still think even doing that is you could be more descriptive about, you know, the loud noise. Is it a clanking or a thrumming or whatever? But I woke up to the sound of a I woke up to a loud noise filling the air around me. My body hurt with a thousand aches and my vision was blurry. Shook my head to see if I shook my head.
I kind of want to get back into his voice, like. I shook my, like, I don't know, like I shook the cobwebs out of my head, kind of get a little more into like how maybe he talks rather than something that's, because this is kind of neutral, you know what I mean? So just, what the hell was that? You got, you got it here. So I shook my head to see if that would help, but all I saw was in, was indistinct amorphous blobs in the dif distance. I saw a white wall of light behind those blobs, illuminating their shapes with some detail. Okay, there was. Just cause it's a little too much. I saw, I saw, I saw. There was there was a bright there was a bright white wall there was a bright I don't know there was a bright wall of light behind those blobs illuminating their shapes with some detail several were about the size of a person. Yeah, I don't know if I was tipping my hand a little too soon. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Um, what the hell is that? Because uh, I have a note on that. that uh, what you're talking about. Yeah. So, just in terms of now what our story is, is you have a guy on the bridge, he's contemplating suicide, he's kind of bitter, he's kind of ranting. He's kind of upset at everyone, upset at the world. He jumps. You got some, you got a bit of like, just kind of moments of his life as he's plummeting to the surface. And he smacks into something. And so right here, you know, the reader's like, is he dead? I woke up. Oh, so he's not dead, but where is he? Oh, there's a bright white wall of light. That's weird. <laughs> right? And you kind of, you do it here, a bright light of, you know. Oh. So, now that I was asking myself some questions, I wondered where I was. This is a weird thing, because... <laughs> right? You already have him asking himself questions. You can literally... Because you're in first person. You can literally have him asking himself questions. So you don't need to tell the reader that he's asking himself questions and wondering where he is. You can just be like, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> so, but in my, own, in my own head, it sounds good. But <laughs> like all the movies said, I I think this is kind of a funny line, but I think if I think it needs to be turned into more of a like overt joke if it's like all the movies said. I, I think was this heaven a bright light? Question mark a bright light and some angels to greet me. My head was spinning. My head was already spinning from whatever hit me before. I'm not sure if this was too much of a telegraph from whatever yeah. hit me. Does this telegraph too much? Um, I don't know why he why he wakes up twice. You know what I mean? <laughs> I kind of want to fix that, that he only wakes up once. And I understand that maybe, maybe make the section a little more clear that, like, he's groggy and, like, he's seeing things through patches of, of 
you know, blurry vision and stuff. Maybe, maybe not use wake up. Because it feels like, oh, I woke up, I'm good. And instead do more of a like splotchy images and be you can be a little more surreal about it and then and then do the wake up here where the first thing i noticed was that i was lying on something soft and yielding it had some resistance to it but it felt comfortable and familiar i just think this is a weird description um i opened my eyes to investigate and saw i was lying in bed and I just, he's already, the first thing I noticed when I was lying around was that I was on, like, he's already kind of looking around. Yeah. So you can just start your sentence there. I was lying in a bed covered in a very soft blanket. Yeah, I'm trying to emphasize the contrast between the reality, between what he was going through. Right, I get it, but I, I think now that we've cut out all the females, the the his his love life and stuff. Yeah. Then now you're going from a dark kind of night bridge, jumping into darkened waters, into this bright light room. <clears> that's <throat> very, or a bright white area in this room that's like straight up just a hotel room. Mm. And it's very like neutral. And so I think, I think you already have that. If you just, if you make, and that's one thing I wanted to, the description in this here with the, what the hotel room is, it's not of the same caliber as the descriptions up here. It's a little like, like you could do more with it. I know you're trying to be sort of generic and plain, but I, I feel like they need to be a little, the descriptions need to be a little more specific. You, you know what I mean? If you're really selling the hotel room thing, and, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, yeah. Just gonna, <clears throat> like it's in, it's all in this description here. Like, okay, you're in a bed covered in a very soft blanket, but uh, you don't need this because we already know he's checking his. The walls, I was lying in a bed covered in a very soft blanket. The walls were painted in a soft tan color. The walls were painted soft tan. And there were curtains covering a window. Like, Curtains is super generic, you know what I mean? Like, are they flower print? Flower print <laughs> curtains covering a window. Just the, the little, it needs a little turning up on, on this room. To my left, there was a small table next to the bed and a chair nearby. And again, like, and the small table is like, you know, whatever. You, you can call it a nightstand. Nightstand. Because that makes me think a little more hotel-y. Yeah. There was a nightstand next to the bed and a chair nearby. But, like, describe this chair for me. Because, like, I don't know. In a hotel, it could be anything. And then the way you describe... And the guy who comes in using the chair, like it, it has to be a specific type of chair because he he takes it and flips it around and sits backwards in it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like if I'm picturing a hotel room and you just have a chair, which is like the most generic way you can describe a chair, and maybe I'm picturing like just something in the corner that's like one of those comfy chairs, and then all of a sudden, this guy comes in and flips it around backwards and tries to sit in it. My mind's image of what that chair is is like, wait a minute, I gotta go back and read this. And you don't. I know this. Seem, I know this seems like ticky tack, and I'm picking on something, but I'm just. No, no, it's, it's, it's a really good point. 
the whole room's so nondescript that it needs a little more character, even if the character of the room is that it's nondescript. It just needs it needs to be really it it needs to be flushed out for the reader that it's supposed to be that way. Mm. Like, is this a folding chair? Is this whatever? So you know. Uh, in the distance, I could see another. In the, in the distance is weird because it's like we're talking about in the distance in the same room, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like there was another doorway leading into a bathroom. All of it tastefully matched the decor, from what I could see. Overall, it looked like some kind of luxury hotel room. Which that's a good description, and and I also get why like you don't lead with that, like you want kind of he's discovering the room, so then he's like, oh, it kind of looks like this. Yeah, it's kind of coming back to him after his ordeal. Right, and I liked this. I don't know why. Oh, I kind of do know. Why. Then I noticed the you know even the small mini fridge. Then I noticed the mini fridge next to the table. Yes, I decided definitely yeah. a hotel room. Um, that actually got a laugh out of me when I read it. Overall, it looked like a luxury hotel room. And then I noticed the mini fridge next to the table. Yes. Yes, definitely a hotel room. Um, Uh, is there something about that mini fridge description that's just like uh, that's the type of stuff that I'm saying is kind of missing in the rest of the the room? Mm -hmm. it, like you get how I'm saying like the chairs are generic, this stuff's kind of generic. There is no personality to this room, but then all of a sudden you're like, it's like a hotel room. There's a mini fridge in it, and all of a sudden it's like, okay, yeah, totally get it. Mm -hmm. So. Taking in for uh, I'm not sure about the uh, taking an inventory because, like, the problem with this is that it's a little confusing. With he was just taking an inventory of the room, and now he's taking an, in, an inventory. I noticed some pain, and you're like, "Oh, he's inventorying his body." So you might even be able to, I noticed some pain in my torso and I and lifted my shirt, the same shirt I noticed. The same shirt that I was wearing when I, when I jumped off the bridge. I'm not sure about this detail. Because I, I feel like, of course it's the same shirt you were wearing when you jumped off the bridge. Because you just jumped off the bridge. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing you talk about it. I'm like, why did I put that in there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> there was a large purplish bruise swelling up, one on each side of my rib cage. I also felt... I also felt... I also felt pain in my back, in my back. My brain was still running laps inside my head. You don't need this. Um, this is really, I like this description. I looked under the sheet. Is it sheet or sheets? I looked under the sheets. And saw my... I looked under the sheets. My bare feet. My feet were bare. I squiggled. 
my <laughs> I don't know, maybe the the hell did my shoes go? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just get back into his voice. I squiggled Instead, I I don't know. I, I, I squiggled my toes to see if they worked. They did. I like that. I think my version would be I squiggled my toes. They still worked. But I think, I don't know. I think yours works well. Well, I squiggled my toes to see if they still worked. Apparent, they did. Apparently, my sneakers and socks have been removed prior to getting the bed. How that? Um... We already kind of hit that with, the hell did my shoes go? There was a gentle knock on the door. Don't know if it needs to be a gentle knock. Oh, I did want to talk about this. Okay. Just talking about tension in general. Yeah. So, there was a gentle knock at the door. Who could that be? Come in, I called out. And this should be a its own thing. I called out curious and again like I mean we're curious. Like we know that. There But okay. The door opened and a young man poked his head into the room, a small smile on his face. I and this is its own thing. Hi, I'm Cole. Um, okay. Get the paragraphs right. Um, I don't think you need who who could that be? Um, so here I want to talk about just just tension and suspense, right? <laughs> So, this dude's just jumped off a bridge and killed himself. At least he thinks so. And he woke up, and now he's in this weird hotel room, and we don't know if it's, like, you know, the good place or that other one Amazon did that was the same thing. Like, you know, is he in heaven? Is he in hell? Is this something else? Right? So the reader's, like, the reader's, like, with this character we're like okay so he's noticing all this stuff we're figuring out it's like oh he doesn't have his shoes on that's weird and then there's a knock on the door i'm not sure the first thing anyone would say is come in <laughs> right yeah, you make a good point so i was thinking about this and i think I actually don't know where we, if we've actually, I think we've called him Tom in the backstory that's all cut. Yeah. So that may need to find a way back in up top. But he's also I. So there was a gentle knock at the door. It should... I jumped up, I jumped up, uh, I jumped to my feet, right, so like, we want to, you have this moment here and you, you want to create tension and suspense, right? So you do that you do that by drawing the moment out. You don't go, there's a knock on the door, come in! Right? And and I'm really gonna draw this moment out. Uh there was a gentle knock at the door. I jumped to my feet, didn't move a muscle, slowly I tilted my head, going at the door handle, waiting for it to turn. It didn't. Instead, three Three, I don't know. Th 
three equally spaced knocks repeated on the door. I gave it to Claire. No way I was opening it. Right? Like, I mean, this is more me, so if you don't, if if this isn't the style and how you write, you can fix it. But, like, again, again. And then, am I too, like, I don't know how blue it is, but you know. <laughs> See. If, if I wanted to make it a bad comedy, I think I could. Who can it be now? <laughs> right, but uh, you get what I'm saying, though. So now, but now this moment has like more tension, and then I think, I think, I waited again. And then I like, instead of come in, instead of who's there, I just like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like? that's such a like, I'm not going to answer, right? Again, again, three knocks. <laughs> Right, so like, and then, like, like when he finally decides, fight. It's like I braced my, I braced myself. What's the worst that could happen? I already tried to. I already jumped off a bridge five minutes ago, or whatever. Mm. I already jumped off a bridge. Uh, I braced myself. What's the worst that could happen? So uh, again, just like instead of going like the door knocks, come in. Da -da -da -da, it feels really robotic that way. Yeah. And you you miss this beat of like we're in this weird place, right? So like draw it out. There was a gentle knock at the door. I jumped to my feet, didn't move them. You could you could have who could that? I jumped to my feet. Who could that be? I didn't move a muscle. Slowly, I tilted my head, glaring at the door handle, waiting for it to turn. It didn't. Instead, three equally spaced knocks repeated on the door. I gave it a death glare. No way I was opening that thing. And uh, No way I was opening that thing. Again, three knocks re repeated. For fuck's sake, this was going to go on all day. I waited again, knowing the knocks would come, and they did. Yeah? You could... I took a step forward, but stopped myself. Yeah? Again, three knocks. What was it with the knocking? Just come in already. I braced myself. What's the worst that could happen? I already jumped off a bridge today. What do you want? The door opened and the young man poked, in, poked his head into the room. I think a small smile on his face is weird. Um, I think you can just do... Right? What do you want? The door opened and a young man poked his head into the room. Hi, I'm Cole. Like, I, I just... there. I think there's more tension in it this way. And I think it's... It just kind of reads better. It's also weird in, in a good way. Uh, I, I would agree with 
through there because with that scene, I'm trying to. Okay, well, there's this mystery, and he wants to talk. Exactly. But, but I get what you're saying. You might want to solve it at the same time. No, you don't want to. You don't want to connect the work. You don't want to Right. Like, he doesn't know what's behind the door. You want to know what's going on, but you still don't want to get hurt or, like, you know. So it's like. So he was dressed in. Uh, hi, I'm Cole. He was dressed in blue jeans, a polo shirt, and a sport jacket. His face was weathered, cut sharply with a brown goatee and short hair. His shoulders were stooped like. Like he. I want to say like he carried a heavy weight on them, but maybe he was carrying a heavy weight. I don't know. That, that's fine. Reaching out his hand to sh shake mine, I lifted my hand. This is this is definitely a definitely a dangling participle because it's the focus of this part is Cole, but the focus of this part is I. So it should be he. But but I also like here I I like he reached out to shake my hand. I just stared at it. When he grabbed it, uh, He grabbed it anyway with a firm handshake. Might be interesting too if like he already knows he's Tom. You know what I mean? It it kind of takes away from Okay, well, we don't have to do that. Maybe he Tom has to introduce himself, but I just these very like Standard greetings, I think, are weird. Yeah, it doesn't fit the scene. He, he, the high on coal I like because it's just odd because you're waiting to be like hurt or whatever. Mm. Um, he reached out to shake my hand, I just stared at it. He grabbed it anyway with a firm handshake. <laughs> and you are there, you go. Uh, uh, I'm Tom. I don't know. You don't have to put the I uh, in. I I hate when people mess with my dialogue, but I'm going to mess with yours. <laughs> you, you, you can mess with my dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> so, the big note I had was down here. And it was... it. It's a similar note to this. To Again, I want to just... This stuff we added all in here. That instead of just, there was a gentle knock on the door. Come in! All of a sudden, now you have like half a page of like, who's at the door? Yeah? You going to come in? No? You're just going to keep knocking? Okay, whatever. Okay, fine. Come in. It, it's sort of that same like drawing drawing out the good ideas you've made because this is where a lot of stuff gets lost is like you'll have really good I, I think for a lot of writers is like they'll have really good ideas and they'll never flush them out or unpack them they'll they'll just be like you you miss your chance to like have this tension and have the reader kind of experience it with the character um now where is it? Cole grabbed the chair sitting near the bed, turned it around, and sat on the seat backwards, startling. This is also this this it's, it's clunky. I know what you're describing, but I think you can describe it better. Um and also, it's why you kind of need to describe up above what kind of chair it is, because all of a sudden, I like I was picturing one of those like masterpiece theater chairs, and it's like he spun that around backwards and is sitting in it. 
damn, dude. Um, I liked this moment. Cole grabbed the chair sitting near the bed. Turn around. Thirsty? Uh, I, this is why I want to break up the... I was just thinking, no. So yourself, he pulled. I also want to, so you had like thirsty, he said, pulling a bottle of water out of the mini fridge. Like anytime you have a dialogue attribution like that, you can just go thirsty. Thirsty, he pulled a bottle of water out. You don't need the he said. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he pulled a bottle. Uh, why did it do that? He pulled a bottle of water out of the mini fridge. And offered it. And offered it to me. I didn't want to. I had it. <laughs> Maybe like I don't know. So I didn't want to, but I hadn't realized how parched I was. Who knew trying to drown yourself was thirsty work? Or something like that. Yeah. Hang on. Gingerly, I took the bottle. This is like, I know a lot, I know some people do this, but I really don't like doing this stuff. I think it, I think it goes back to that thing where like, you need to let the readers experience the read. And when you do stuff like this, you're like, you're telling them how to experience it. It was nice and cold. I think this could be better, but it, it's fine. Oh, okay. So, I wanted to reorder this scene. And I, I already kind of started it up here. So, where am I and what am I doing here? I said, looking at Cole. He looked back at me intently, scrutinizing my face like he was going to, like he was going to be taking a test about it. His expression changed from smiling to a more taciturn look. It's a great question, he said. You're here on the boat called Second Chances. As for why you're here, what's the last thing you remember? I just want to say, like, at this point, like, for me as the reader, I still don't know. I'm like, is, is that something in heaven or something? Cole's voice was inviting and full of warmth. Uh, there was something, again, this is like, you're sort of experiencing the thing for the reader. I scrunched my face and thought, this is weird too, because it's like, it's not something you can see, and you're the eye, so, but I also, you can scrunch your face and not, it kind of works, but again, it's this in thought, it's like, I scrunched my face and thought, as I thought, <laughs> like, uh, too much yeah, so, I, 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 like we, in terms of the read, this was like five minutes ago. You know what I mean? We know he yeah. just jumped off the bridge and stuff. So like I, I like the dialogue of I jumped off the bridge and was going to die. Cole nodded, holding. Cole nodded, holding his head. 
his chin in his right hand and with the elbow leaning on the chair. I get, this is another one like I get what you're going for. It's just not it's it needs to be rewarded. Um treating it like it's like it's a word. There we go. I also was using a way to um subtly hint to the reader given what you see later on in the story. Why didn't he recognize it? So I'm, I'm trying to describe facial features that make it hard to recognize somebody years ago. I, I, I get it, I get it. I, I'm just okay. Uh, what I'm talking about here more is, is not about that. It's that it's that we still don't know if these guys are like angels or not. Yeah. And I think you have a good exchange that's kind of weird. Like weird in a good way. Mm -hmm. That I think creates ambiguity. And I think like the come in thing. It can be, you can draw out that tension a little more. I think you resolve it too quickly. So I'm trying to kind of, because I think I'm going to need to redo some of this stuff. Um, but, uh, okay, and I, I also think it's key to the character in this thing where I kind of want him to be a little flippant and jerky. Because it's yeah. like, you know, he's suicidal and he's trying to commit suicide. And maybe he could be like, you know, you a-holes stop me from killing myself. And then at the same time, the guys who are there are like, well, we're your guardian angels. We want to make you a better person. And... and you can play out the scene like that with with that type of conflict, and, and I think it's a I think it's glossed over a little too fast. Here, here's the line I like that. So, do you remember what happened next? Cole said, "I nodded. I hit something, and then I blacked out." Cole smiled enigmatically. Well, more like something hit you, not the other way around. Huh? I said, confused. What do you mean? You were caught in midair by one of my wingmen. And I, I love this because it's still like, wait, is it an angel? Mm -hmm. And I do, I really like how matter-of-fact Cole is being. And there's kind of, there's a bit of humor in it. You were caught in midair by one of my wingmen. He flew you over here to our staging area onto the landing bed of the boat. You were unconscious the whole time. Our medical staff examined you to make sure you were all right and that there was nothing physically wrong. Hey, how are those bruises, by the way? Um, <laughs> right? It's it's a little too, like, perfect and on the nose, but, like, in a way that's, like, this whole scene is so weird that I kind of like it. I... I think there was something I did. I, I looked at kind of just shortening this a little. Our medical... Like, maybe our medical, our medical staff examined you. And there was nothing physically wrong. How are those bruises, by the way? I, <clears throat> um... Uh, there was nothing physically wrong other than a couple bruises. How are they, by the way? I, I don't know. The, like, I, I, I like that there's this kind of like he's trying to buddy up to him a little bit. And, yeah. and you can have the main character being very standoffish. I touched my sides without thinking about it and winced, sore. Okay, th this is this is starting to get on to telegraphing a little too much. 
but again, I like it. I just, I think, I think this works. I think this is too much because all of a sudden you realize it's not angels. I think you can hang on to it being angels a little longer. So. Yeah, yeah, that that happens when we catch a person. And this, to me, this is like almost childish and a little on the nose. Yeah. But it is so weird that I really like it. Like, so, uh, what he asked him, this needs to be rearranged, but we'll, I'll come back to it. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm loving this. Um, I do have to go to work tomorrow, though. All right, here I want to get to the very. I want to get to this one part. Well, it'll be like two minutes. Um, no, no, that, that's fine. I, I would love to say it, but I'm going to be at the party tomorrow. Okay, okay. I mean, if if, if, if we want to come back and do more, uh, another beat, uh, I'm I'm perfect okay with that. Okay. Uh, Sorry, you're cutting out? What? No, I just want to put that out there because I don't want you to be like, oh, he just wants to get off the phone with me. No, I'm, no, I'm, I'm loving this. This is great. I, I very much appreciate it. All right. Do you have five yeah, minutes no or do you got it, Jeff? Yeah. No, no, that's fine. Five minutes. Okay. I, I just wanted to show this because I wanted to talk about like making making this a novel and like the first like looking at this as a first chapter. So I draw that stuff out, make it a little more like an angel. But where is it? There was a line. Oh, okay. Here here it is. And I'd end on I'd end on a button. So like a like for TV they call it a button. It's like a joke. Yeah. Um like a scene transition. Right. So I kind of like ending chapters like that as well. So, so he's described everything. He's like, oh, they have this little back and forth about him trying to kill himself. And like Cole's kind of onto it and he knows why he's doing it. And I think you should have Tom being a little flippant and standoffish about it. And he doesn't want to reveal himself. Um, turning to look at me, Cole said, but I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be this way. There's a way to stop your suffering. And it's not through suicide, but by getting help. He sagely offered, I would like to help you if you'll let me. Are you interested? Okay. Come with me if you want to live. No, no. But there is, there is a joke here that like, but I'm here to tell you that there is a way to stop your suffering and it's not through suicide. It's, it's by getting help, he sagely offered. And a jetpack. <laughs> and I'd end my chapter right there. I'd literally end on this line, and a jetpack. Well, that's the only thing I wanted to suggest. Because then, I think then the next chapter, you do all your training stuff, which is essentially what you have going beneath here. Mm. But... I also think that's a hell of a first chapter. And maybe you disagree, maybe you don't, but like, he, it's a dude who's been, who's been, who's tries to commit suicide, tries to jump off a bridge, gets rescued. You can play it up like that. He gets rescued by angels and this guy's like kind of instructing him and in how to do it. And, and, it's been kind of vague the whole time, and then you have uh, it's by getting it's by getting you help and a jetpack, and I, it's it's by getting you help he sagely offered and a jetpack. Like I, I just think that I think that's a really strong hook for like a clever deal where this covert organization gets. Uh, you know, suicidal guys to kind of go on these crazy suicidal missions. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. 
in, 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 later, in later versions, I cut out the part uh, where he meets one of the wingmen. And he's like, yeah, you know, I used to be like you, and now I do this. And... I... I, I think this is a very good, like, ending point for a chapter. Especially, and I think it's a much, much tighter chapter written this way. Where where you lose a lot, you lose the backstory. And there's some stuff in here I wanted to go over where, like, how to structure and build it. Because you have pieces, and you have, but I can talk about that, like, some other time. Anyway, I just wanted to get to this. I think... I think it's really strong if you just end your chapter here. And then it's like, it's kind of the, oh, I'm going to be Iron Man, or oh, I'm going to be Spider-Man. And then you have all your, you know, Spider-Man, Iron Man training stuff where they explain the thing to him and he does it. So how does that sound? <laughs> no, I, 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 I mean, you know, I, Never written a fiction story before, so I got this and going. Oh, uh, there, there's so many different ways to type it and, and make it so much better and pull up strength out. Yeah, uh, um, I just you you're you're good at writing, and you have like you have very good descriptions and stuff, and I just wanted to show uh, one. I wanted to show how you kind of. Take something from a first draft stage to a more like polished stage, even though this does not look polished here. But also like just some some ideas on how to approach doing things differently. And then just structurally, I thought this was kind of an issue, the big backstory dump, because you know, the story really is the the very interesting stuff is kind of this cool. He's been selected to be part of this team. So I think you want to get to that. And then start putting in the, oh, why was he suicidal in the first place? Anyway. Um, yeah, go cool, get some sleep. I'm sorry for keeping you up. <laughs> don't, don't, don't be sorry at all. Um, this is tremendously helpful. All right. And, it, and it's such a... Um, uh, it's nice of you to dedicate the time to help you do that. No, I, th I thought it was cool. And thanks, because I've been wanting to do this. I've been meaning to do more, like, sort of teaching stuff. And I can see where I'm, like, kind of stumbling through stuff. And I can be more clear. Anyway, yeah, I'm just going to end the stream. And we'll, we'll chat later. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for participating. Thank you for providing such wonderful insight. <laughs> I'm glad I could help. I will talk to you later.